Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the titles to the new Dawn of the Planet of the Apes trailer. So here's the titles that I came up with, and it's fairly similar, and this is done completely in After Effects, no third-party plugins, and I'm not even using 3D like Element 3D or the Ray Traced. Let me show you um, the titles from the trailer. If you haven't seen the trailer, there's a link in the description. Go check it out. Looks like a great movie. And at the end, the title comes in, and this is what it looks like. So kind of a really neat effect. Um, I like how there's different layers of the of the text and the shadow um, casting down on the bottom layer. And as I was analyzing this, I first I thought, oh, that was done in Cinema 4D or Element 3D or something like that. And in fact, I was able to recreate it pretty um, realistically without using anything like that. And I'm going to show you how to do that in this tutorial. So let's get started. First off, let's create, you guessed it, a new composition. So Command or Control N will create a new composition. I'm going to call this just Dawn, 1920 by 1080, 24 frames a second or 23.976. And click OK. I have it six seconds long. And from here, I need to, first thing I need to do is create the text, the Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. And this is going to take me a little bit of time. And so I'm going to fast forward through this. And then afterwards, I'm going to kind of tell you how I did it because there's a little trick to get the right font. I don't have it perfect, but I have it pretty close, and someone might be able to go out and find the correct font for this, but um, I'm using Helvetica and then another font because the S in Helvetica is not, um, doesn't look right. So I'm going to do that now, and then you'll see it done. Okay, so here I have it all arranged, and when you're doing stuff like this, it's easiest to have all of these different words, um, different layers. So you can kind of line them up how you want, and instead of trying to do it all in one layer. Now, what I did here is like for planet and apes, how the P is uh, longer. What it is, is I've got these set to small caps. And so then the P is a capital, and then I've just adjusted it down um, using the character settings. And that's how I did that on, on that P and that P. And then this S is a different font. So the rest of the font is just Helvetica Nui, bold, and then this one for the S is SF Forsh. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. But that's the one I found that looked most similar. It's not exact, but this is what I found uh, out of the fonts that I had on hand. Now, after you have all the fonts set up how you want, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this, how I did it. Maybe pause it and so you can uh, copy it how I did that. And um, then I'm going to take and pre-compose these. So I'm going to take Dawn and of the, these first, these top lines, I'm going to put those into one composition. So Control or Command Shift C. We'll do the pre-compose. We'll call this top line. You're going to make sure you move all the attributes. And then the rest of them, pre-compose that, the bottom line, and move all the attributes. So now that they're in two separate lines, because that's how they moved in the example. Now I want to add a bit of a texture to this. So I'm going to go in to this example, and I'm going to go in and pre-compose this again, because I want this all into one composition. And I've just got a stone texture, and then put it down below. Let's change the track mat to alpha, and then that will cut it out and give it a texture. Then I want to do that to this bottom one as well. So double click that, and take all these, let's pre-compose that again, Bring in my stone texture, stick it at the bottom, change the track mat to alpha mat. Now we're starting to look kind of more like the example. Okay, next I want to do is to create kind of the bevel that was there. You see kind of this bevel going on. So let's go into the top line and lots of pre-composing here. So I'm going to pre-compose pretty much everything. So pre-compose that. Um, I'm going to call that top, duplicate that, and the bottom one, let's just hide the top layer. We're going to go to layer, layer styles, and we're going to add a stroke. 
I'm going to bring that stroke size up to six, uh, maybe five. Change the color to kind of a darkish gray. And that's looking pretty good. Um, the one thing actually we do have to do is I want the bevel on the of the to be smaller. So I'm going to duplicate this. Take this top layer, and I'm going to mask around just the dawn. Then take the bottom layer, go back into the layer styles, and bring that down to two. So it's still going to be there. Uh, maybe we'll go to three. Still going to be there, but not as thick. So that's the top um, line. Now let's do the same thing in the bottom line. So same thing, I'm going to take both these layers, pre-compose it, let's duplicate this, then let's go back into this top line, let's find the layer style and just copy it. So I just command C to copy, and then I pasted that. Now what I want to do is duplicate this, take this bottom one, bring the stroke to 3, and then I'm going to take this top one, grab my mask tool, mask around the of the, and then go into invert. And what that will do is it will make it so this is the small one underneath this bottom layer. This top layer is the thicker one. Now, I don't quite like that color right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in to this stone wall. I'm going to go to Effect, this Color Correction, Tint, and that will make everything black and white. And I'm probably going to do that on the top layer as well. Okay. So, it's starting to look good. Now, I want to add a little bit of dimension to this, um, to these text with the bev with the bevel. So let's go in. And I'm going to take these bottom layers because I've got two of them, pre-compose again. And I'm going to add an effect, effect generate CC light sweep. And this is going to add a bit of a kind of a light reflection and I want this to be kind of more on the top so I'm gonna make it about 90 degrees we'll just do a full 90 degrees maybe take the edge intensity up a little bit about right there now I'm going to take this CC light sweep. Let's go now into this bottom line. Again, I need to take both of these because I had one for the bigger letters and one for the smaller letters. Take both of these and pre-compose this. Let's take the CC light sweep that I had already copied. I'm going to paste it. And I do need to bring this down. Let's make that wider. And let's go in and maybe take the sweep intensity down a little bit. It's a little bit bright. Okay, let's take a look at how this looks. So we're now at the point where the text is looking pretty similar. And we can do some a little bit of color correcting to kind of get it the way we want. So let's go into Effect, Color Correction, Curves. Let's go into Green. Let's add some green. RGBs, maybe bring it down, the darkness. Add some blue. a bit of red and I'm liking the color of that 
So I'm going to copy that, paste it on the bottom, and then there's the title so far. And this is looking pretty good. But the thing that is the awesomest about this video is how uh, the movement in the shadow. And that's going to be uh, one of the most difficult things to do. But I'm going to show you how to do it right now. First off, let's create the movement and then we'll create the shadow. So to create the movement, I'm going to add a new null object. I'm going to take both of these and just apply it to the null. Just parent it. We're going to start at the beginning. Let's scale this down. Let's have it start about at 86%. And then go to the end. And let's go towards about five seconds and scale this up. So that's that initial movement. Um, but beyond that, I need these two to move separately. So the bottom line, I'm going to take this, I'm going to scale it down, and I'm actually going to scale and position. Let's bring the scale back to 100, position back to normal. Actually, I want the scale to end a little bit less. About like that. Maybe we can even have it. And I want this actually not to go all the way to the to the end of the composition. I want it to be up before it even, let's do about one second. Okay. Maybe not quite one second. Let's go one and a half. All right, now let's add the shadow. The shadow is tricky in order to make it look proper um, is because I'm not doing this in 3D, and it's a 3D looking shadow. So how I did that is I'm going to take this top line, the one that says Dawn of the, I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to pre-compose. Go ahead and move all the attributes. We're going to call this Shadow. And let's move it below the top line and the bottom line. Let's go into this. And let's turn this off so I can see what I'm doing. And the thing about the shadow is I don't want any of these holes to show because if we look in the example, it's supposed to be that these letters are really thick and extruded and so the shadow is coming from up above and so of course there's not going to be a hole in the D um, in order to show through. So I need to fill those up. And it's just as easy as just taking this and let's grabbing a pen tool make sure my layer is not selected because I'm going to be making just some shapes I'm going to be filling this in and for the of the I want them to be just as tall as the rest of the letters but just as skinny as they are now so I'm going to do something kind of like this and I also want to have one big shape that kind of goes all the way across the bottom. Now this is looking a little bit crazy right now, uh, but trust me, it's going to look like a shadow when we're done. So let's go back into this dawn. I'm going to take this shadow layer, go to the effect, color correction, tint, and I'm going to map the white to black so it's just completely black. Now since I pre-composed it, it's not connected to the no object anymore. So I'm going to move to the point where everything is lined up right. And then I'm going to connect it to the null object. So now it'll scale with it properly. So then right here, I need to come into my shadow at the very beginning, turn it 3D. I'm going to hit Y on the keyboard to bring up my pan behind tool and I'm going to move the anchor point to right at the bottom. And let's rotate this. And 
Now let's add a blur to it. Just a Gaussian blur, but we're going to do it twice. So I'm going to blur this a little bit. And then I'm going to duplicate this. And then I'm going to just blur vertical. A lot. And let's take a look at this with the background black. And as I as I look at this, it's not quite how I want. So I'm going to go back into the shadow. And I want this the shape seven. I'm going to adjust it. I want it to be a lot um, bigger like this. Take up more of the bottom. Okay, that's looking pretty good. See, it's starting to look like a real good shadow. And so in order to keyframe this, I want this shadow to be long at the beginning, like this, and also have more blur. So I'm going to keyframe the blurriness on both Gaussian blurs. And on the shadow, I'm going to keyframe the scale. And by the time the... Uh, letters get all the way in. I'm going to scale this in. Take down the blurriness. And then you can see kind of how that looks like. It's revealing from underneath the dawn of the all right, we're almost done. All we have to do is add the rest of the shadows and kind of the highlight. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm just going to create a new solid, just a black solid right over top of this. And I'm going to grab my ellipse tool, and then I'm going to invert it. And so I've got kind of this black ellipse over top of it. And then let's come in. And I don't have to be perfect. I'm going to bring this circle in. And then let's go into the mask. Let's feather it. Uh, about 300. And then I can change the expansion. So it starts off all the way dark. Let's keyframe all of that. Move forward, expand out, and I'm going to want still some of the gradient, so as I open this up a little bit, I'm going to increase the feather. And maybe have it still kind of more dark underneath. And then it's starting to lighten out. So I'm just kind of playing through and adjusting adjusting the mask to kind of fit how it looks. And then one thing that you saw in the example is we got kind of this light glint on top that happened while it was still dark. And that's really easy to achieve. So what I'm going to do for that yeah, I'm not, still not 100% um, in love with how fast that's coming on. So I'm going to move this a little bit. Okay. So what I want to do for that now that I is I'm going to take this top line. I'm going to duplicate it, move it above the black solid. I'm going to take it. Effect, color correction, tint, just to turn it all black. Then I'm going to go effect, generate, CC light sweep. Let's make this 90 degrees again. It's actually, no, let's make it 
uh, like negative 17 will be good. Make it really wide. And the edge intensity. And basically, I want just kind of the top to show up. So I'm going to mess around with the settings until I'm getting most of just the top. And then from here, I'm going to go to Effect, Color Correction, Curves, just to kind of crush the blacks. And then what I can do with this is I'm going to go to my Toggle Switches and Modes, and then just go to Add. I'm going to just uh, keyframe the opacity so it kind of hits that highlight first. And that's really all there is to it. And also in the example, it fades out in the end. And so what I want to do with that is, again, this black solid. Let's just keyframe all of this. Let's start with the expansion. And then I'm also going to need to change the opacity on this highlight that I have. Change that opacity to be zero at the same time, but I want it to kind of linger a little bit, so I'm going to have it start a little bit late. So there is the final look. Let's render through this. So there it is. I don't have sound in this, but you can just grab sound from anywhere. Um, I actually have the sound from the actual trailer um, that I used in the example at the beginning. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope you learned a lot. And this just goes to show that you don't have to always use third-party plugins. You don't always have to use special 3D software. And you can create um, a look that is pretty darn cool just from 2D elements and all within After Effects. So if you have any questions, just post them down in the comments, and I'd love to see what you guys come up with using this technique. And so if you've got a video of your own, go ahead and put those down there as well so we can all see it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.